Well, when, when we first got this house, uh, the, a group of us bought it for $9,000. And uh, it was for the Preservation Society. And when we got it, three stories, and it had a coat of tar and little granite all over the front, it's called flint coat. And we were peeling it off. Every, every week we'd come by, we'd peel a little more off. And then we saw, in the front of the building, we saw the whole evidence where there were going to be poles coming out to support that pent roof. And we knew it was going to have a pent roof because it's got a little belt course just above there. I'll show you that in a minute. But one, when we got it, we saw these large bricks. And these are large uh, handmade bricks. Uh, they have alternating glazed headers. And the glaze has been badly worn off in, in many of them. But in order to give the building some regularity, when they laid these bricks, they struck this deep vine joint in here. And when you step back and you look at it, that's what gives it, right in here, for instance, you'll see how regular it makes the bricks look. You don't even notice the irregularity of the bricks. When we tried to take it off the side of the building, this, this coating that was on here, when we tried to take it off the side of the building, we were pulling off the faces of the bricks. And so what we had to do was stop, and Maryland Historical Trust wanted us to uh, stucco the side of the house rather than put uh, tear up the brick. So we put a screen on there and then put the stucco, and uh, someday if they ever find out how to take that tore off, they can take the stucco off and, and use some solvent or something to get the brick itself clean. Can you see that row of three bricks underneath the windowsills up there? Right. That's a belt course. And when it's at the windowsill level, you know, it, it's not supposed to be at the windowsill level. It's supposed to be in halfway between the windows and the upstairs and downstairs. But when it's up high like that, it indicates that there was a pent roof on the building. And this is a pent roof. And it's not typical of Baltimore. It's, more north of here, uh, up in Cecil County and Pennsylvania, in that kind of area. Did I tell you that the house was built in no. uh, 1764? And when we got the house, we, we really, we knew it was an old house. We didn't know how old exactly. We didn't know much about it. We had to do a lot of research on it. And then we found out that it was uh, the date of the house and we found out that uh, the man who owned it, Robert Long, uh, had actually uh, done something in the Revolutionary War. Uh, Governor Sims Lee, uh, at the time during the Revolutionary War, authorized this man, Robert Long, the owner here, to commandeer any wagons he needed at all in the state to take grain up to uh, New Jersey to Washington's troops because they were starving and the rivers were frozen, they couldn't get through. And so uh, Robert Long commandeered people's wagons and people's grain and whatnot, took it up, and uh, uh, then after the war, we found out that Robert Long went back to the state's assembly like politicians today, time and time again, telling him how much of his own money he spent doing this and how he, he needed to get repaid. So, so Robert Long was kind of a crook. Right? <laughs> so here it is, the Robert Long house. Well, there it is. Right. Well, I mean, he was just an ordinary guy. Mordecai Gist was the general in charge of uh, the troops here. But after the end of the war, all the land that had been taken and property that had been seized of the Tories, and uh, uh, there were Tories here, and so their property had been seized and was owned by the state. And then it was sold to, and it was to be sold in a democratized Methodist method. And uh, uh, so they did, they sold it all off. There was a man named uh, Ebenezer Mackey who had bought Robert Long's warehouse, which was on the water. Ebenezer Mackey uh, 
his property had been taken, and uh, Robert Long went and bought it for a little bit of money. And what they wanted, they wanted everybody to have a chance to get at this Tory property. But of all the Tory properties taken in Baltimore, there, there were 12 buyers who got it all. And Robert Long and General Mordecai Gist, they got about, uh, oh, I, I can't, it, it's a staggering number of thousands of pounds worth of property uh, that they bought because they were right there at the right time. It wasn't a very uh, good process. They, they made out like crazy, right. Before we leave, while we're right here, could, we, could you get some pictures of that house down the street, the double house?